It's powerful, it's off-road ready and quite fun to ride. Kugo are here with the Moto Kirin M4, electric scooter with surprisingly good specs at the unbelievable price of around $600. Is it really that good? Let's inspect! Welcome, Tech for Road Channel Michael here, and we have to admit it, electric scooters have slowly turned into something normal, guess most people got used to the idea that this is a new cool way of transportation, and most countries already have proper regulations for riding electric scooters. Kugo, as a brand, is more popular in Europe, I'm not sure you can easily purchase that if you're from the United States, not even sure if they have the necessary certifications. Now, the M4 is the third Kugo scooter I've tested, and I'll say the front, the Mo Basic S series were acceptable, but definitely not comfortable to ride. The M4 brings the ride experience onto a new level, and we're going to get to this point in a moment. It costs around $650, which is currently around $50 less than the similarly sized 9V Max, but the Kirin model offers dual active suspension, much faster speed, much more powerful motor, larger tires, better weight distribution, however slightly worse range. So it's quite an interesting set of features I'd like us to go through. While unpacking the scooter, may I remind you that since the maximum speed of the scooter is 45 km per hour, it's going to require a driving license in most countries and make sure to verify with your local authorities in order to avoid any complications. It weighs exactly 23.2 kg, almost the same way as the 9 bot Max mentioned earlier. You notice that there's not too much that has to be done after you take it out. Grab the tool set and tighten the screws. I like a lot the idea that it has a key, which is another way to prevent someone stealing it. Can't wait to tell you about the specs, and here they are. 500 watt motor, 10 amp hour battery, 10 inch pneumatic tires, 45 km per hour maximum speed, there are by the way three grades of this speed, safety warning tail light, dual brake system, dual shock system, reliable folding mechanism, adjustable seats. And I guess that's the most important out of it. If you're wondering about some features that you may not find with this model, there's no smartphone app for instance, but you do have pretty decent amount of info shown on the display. Tires are not hard tires, which on the other side makes the riding comfort greater. I wish they were putting some sealant inside, just in case. The seat here is amazingly comfortable, however, you're gonna need some patience until it's ready. Make sure to tighten everything well, otherwise it may roll during riding and that's not gonna be nice. The best part is that you can control the seat height and the handlebar height according to your own needs. Example, if you're going to be sitting most of the time, you will prefer to lower the handle in order to maintain good level of visibility in front of you. You can ride the scooter without the saddle, just remove it. The major part is self-detachable, here's the scooter in position to be ridden while we are standing. Make sure to pull the handlebar according to your own height, in my case to the maximum. Height is perfect even for a tall person. And that's everything you need to know and set up prior to the first ride. I suggest also checking the tire pressure and making sure most of the screws are properly tightened. And you might need to adjust the brakes as well. Speaking of comfort, look at the wide board. You can properly fit both of your feet and space is quite generous. Anti-zip coverage for maximum grip. By the way, look at that, dual disc brakes. Reliable and compliant with requirements that you may face in certain countries. And speaking of regulation requirements, turn signals, they are better visible in dark, unfortunately barely notable in daytime if there is a lot of sun. Let's take a closer look at the handlebar and the riding modes. From left to the right, left brake is the rear brake. I don't know why they always do that. Was the same with the Fido M1 electric bike. I prefer the left to be controlling the front wheel. And for instance, in the United States, the low requires it to be like that. Then these two buttons, easy to figure out, horn and lights. By the way, the lights are fabulous, quite disco looking style. I've seen a lot of Miss Scooter owners seeking for such effect. And it's out of the box with the Kugo M4. Then the voltage meter, very very useful to be informed about your battery's performance and it will let you know of the actual capacity of the battery, however not visible in daylight. That display, by the way, is awesome. First of all, visible in sunlight, 
And to me, this is one of the most important features of the M4. You're being made aware about the mileage you've passed, the battery voltage and even real-time speed. Speaking of speed, the three different gears. First one is quite slow, 15 km per hour, then 30 and then 45. Short side note, I managed to get maximum 41 km per hour during the testing. Guess the 45 are achievable by lighter riders. Which reminds me that depending on the intensity, they say that the range is up to 45 km. It's all in the details and if you read the information about how this has been tested, could go state the following. The 40 km range can be achieved by a person that weighs 55 kilos on a flat road and has used the brakes only three times. Sounds good, doesn't work for most of us, because in urban environments it is a lot more often stop and go situations. But the range, even at the highest rate for a 90 kilo weighting person like me, it's gonna be around 20, maybe up to 25 kilometers if you're riding at constant speeds. At the mid speed, 30 kilometers are realistic expectation. The more you support by kicking, the more energy you're going to preserve for longer mileage. In fact, I noticed the range to not be too far behind the 9 Max. I somehow never got close to the promised 60 km there. And riding here, especially off-road, is a lot more fun. Now, since we know about the controls and display info and stuff, time for some reality checks. I live in Sofia, a city known for its beautiful places and scenes, but also famous for areas with pretty bad road infrastructure, despite what the government claims. I also ride a lot my bike off and off-road, so there are some well-known terrains I've tested and I can express a lot of positive thoughts about the riding experience. First of all, the scooter feels very stable. At the very beginning, perhaps the mechanisms on the front were over-tightened and felt somewhat weird, but everything settled down quickly and when I'm sitting, it's great. The pneumatic tires and the suspension make even riding on paved roads quite smooth and I've been going through places where I never dared to go with the 9Bot Max or the Mi Scooter. The M4 is constructed in a way it feels rugged and off-road friendly, and the more I ride it, the more I love this feeling. No problem with slopes, 20% uphills is fine, and it did very well when I was going uphills on the streets back home. I've tried the same section of 500 meters with both the Kirin M4 and the 9Bot Max and the Mi Scooter. While the Mi Scooter can go as fast as 25 km per hour, both other contenders had maximum speed of 30 km per hour set because I used the second gear on the Kugo. And the results were pretty interesting. You notice that the M4 nails it and most impressive is that I didn't even use a third speed which uses most of the torque. If I switch to it, well, no chances at all for the 9Bot Max. Braking is solid too, the disc brakes are always something I appreciate, they're adjustable, so that's another positive. Folding, super simple, pull out, fold, done. Similar with unfolding, the mechanism is much more solid than what we have on some other scooters, doesn't interfere with the structural integrity of the front tube. And one more huge advantage, most bike locks are going to make it through these holes. While Kugo doesn't advertise that, it's a big bonus that you're going to get. Before we wrap up, as usual, I keep a list with the issues. Luckily, there are just a few of them, and mostly minor. We mentioned there is no smartphone app, but I didn't feel the need of such. No slime in the tires, and yes, I've become a little obsessed with that. The seat mechanism was a little loose, never managed to fix that, and luckily doesn't appear to be a problem while riding, besides the noise. There also is no cruise control and no kinetic energy recharge and after a couple of weeks the scooter I can sense increased clanking from the front. After having tested it in different environments, the experience has always been exceptional. Stable, smooth, with super quick acceleration and all the needed extras that gonna make you feel safe and comfortable while riding at longer distances. Thanks to the suspension, there are way less vibrations you may feel. Pretty sure most people that ride scooters know that feeling after 30-40 minutes of urban riding. Overall, I think for 600 bucks, this is much better choice than the 9Bot Max. True, not as great range, although as mentioned difference in my real life testing was not that huge. And all the additional extras make me think that the Kirin M4 is one of the best $600 scooters you can get right now. If you need even greater range, there's a pro version with off-road tires, slightly improved suspension, a little different folding mechanism and a larger battery. 
I do hope that Kugo as a company are going to continue to improve at the current pace, because while the older S1 was not as good as the Mi Scooter, the M4 is in my opinion considerably better. That's been it for this episode. I've had a lot of fun while making this and I truly hope it felt the same way for you while watching it. If so, please show me your appreciation by hitting the like button. Sharing via social media is always helpful so that your friends get to know about one more cool gadget. And from my end, which is for a fantastic day, take good care of yourself, ride safely and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!